Hey there, health warriors. Is vitamin D really a villain or a misunderstood hero? This video might get my channel banned or in trouble, but it will make you question everything you thought you knew about modern medicine. For a century now, vitamin D has found itself embroiled in a medical tug of war. The recommended daily allowance, or RDA, is a mere 600 international units, a number that seems paltry compared to the benefits this sunshine vitamin might offer. This number is the result of committee decisions, but is it truly reflective of our needs? In a world before medicine, our ancestors turned to the sun for healing. Sunbathing, or heliotherapy as it was known, was a common treatment for ailments ranging from tuberculosis and asthma to osteoporosis and even certain types of cancer. The sun was our ally, not the enemy modern society often paints it to be. This controversy surrounding vitamin D leaves us with a vital question. Is the sun, and by extension vitamin D, as harmful as we've been led to believe? Or have we been unknowingly basking in a misunderstanding? Seems the sun isn't as bad as we've been led to believe. Now it's your turn. Comment the section below sharing your experience with vitamin D. Let's learn from each other. Join our community to hear real-life experiences from our viewers. If you find this information helpful, don't keep it to yourself. Share it with your friends. And here's a fun fact. Did you know that vitamin D plays a pivotal role in maintaining our bone health? Yes, it aids in the absorption of calcium, a fundamental element of strong, healthy bones. Now back to discussion. So, you've been told to avoid the sun and take supplements instead, right? Well, let's dig into some numbers and fun facts. The recommended daily allowance for vitamin D is around 600 international units, equivalent to around 1.8 minutes in the summer sun. Did you know that just half an hour of sun exposure can help your body produce a staggering 10,000 international units of vitamin D? That's 16 times the required daily intake. Quite a disparity, isn't it? Yet for years we've been preached the importance of sunblock and the dangers of sun exposure. The shift from embracing the sun's natural vitamin D to relying on supplements has been significant. It's interesting to note that despite the sun being a natural and abundant source of vitamin D, we've been encouraged to seek it elsewhere. But what if the sun isn't the real enemy here? Let's delve deeper into this intriguing and often controversial topic. Let's delve into history for a moment. And here's a fun fact to kick things off. The discovery of vitamin D actually resulted from a happy accident. When trying to find a cure for rickets in the early 20th century, it was accidentally discovered that cod liver oil, a rich source of vitamin D, could alleviate the symptoms. Now, back to our main story. In the early days, the government commissioned a study to investigate the effects of vitamin D. The results were fascinating, revealing that there was no toxicity at doses ranging from 200,000 to 1 million international units a stark contrast to the current recommended daily allowance of a mere 600 international units. However, these findings were misunderstood and misconstrued, leading many to fear the potential toxicity of vitamin D. This fear was not unfounded, but it was misdirected. The real issue was not the vitamin itself, but the methods used to produce it. Production techniques led to products with inconsistent and sometimes dangerously high levels of vitamin D, spawning concerns about toxicity. The drama of these events threw a shadow over vitamin D, causing many to overlook its potential benefits. The narrative became one of fear and avoidance, rather than understanding and optimization. This historical perspective is crucial to understanding why we are where we are today, with a society that is largely deficient in this essential nutrient. In an ironic twist, the very substance that was once feared for its toxicity is recognized for its vital role in our health. Yet the ghost of past misunderstandings still haunts us, influencing current recommendations and causing many to miss out on the benefits of optimal vitamin D levels. It seems there's more to vitamin D toxicity than meets the eye. Now, the link between vitamin D and your immune system. Well, let's dive into that. Vitamin D3, specifically, plays a big role. It's known as an immune modulator, essentially helping your immune system to function more effectively. And here's a fun fact. Vitamin D is so crucial to our immune system that without it, our bodies would struggle to fight off even the most common illnesses and infections. Now, when it comes to the recommended intake, there's a bit of a discrepancy. The Institute of Health suggests a daily dose of around 600 international units, 
but that's not the only voice in the field. Other organizations looking at the same data suggest the optimal amount is actually well over 8,000 units. That's quite a difference. So why the variation? Well, it seems it all boils down to interpretation of the data and differing opinions on what constitutes optimal health. Clearly, there's a divide in the scientific community about the right dosage. Not everyone in the medical community is on board with these findings. Despite the increasing wealth of research advocating the benefits of vitamin D, it seems some resistance still lingers. Top researchers in the field of vitamin D studies have often faced significant opposition, their claims dismissed or even ridiculed. Did you know that when the concept of germs and the importance of hand hygiene first introduced by Ignaz Semmelweis in the 19th century, his peers laughed it off, and it took years for this now basic tenet of healthcare to be accepted. This isn't a new phenomenon in the world of medicine. Take folates, for example. These are types of B vitamins found naturally in many foods. When scientists first discovered the immense benefits of folates in preventing birth defects, they faced similar resistance. It took years of persistent research and advocacy before folates were widely accepted and incorporated into prenatal. So why the resistance? It's hard to say. Perhaps it's the fear of change. Or maybe it's the reluctance to challenge long-held beliefs. But if history, dotted with incidences of resistance such as the hand hygiene one, has taught us anything, it's that science and medicine are ever-evolving fields and to resist change is to hinder progress. Does history repeat itself in the world of medicine? Could where you live impact your health? It's a compelling question, isn't it? Let's dive right into it. Our planet's geography plays a significant role in our health, more than we often realize. Did you know that your geographical location can greatly impact your body's vitamin D production? Yes, that's right. People living in the higher latitudes where sunlight is scarce can have lower vitamin D levels in their bodies. Fascinating, isn't it? Now, let's take a closer look at the diseases that plague our modern world. Multiple sclerosis, breast cancer, colorectal cancer, diabetes. The prevalence of these conditions is not uniform across the globe. Areas closer to the equator, bathed in sunlight most of the year, seem to have lower instances of these diseases. Could the sun and its golden rays hold the key? Sunlight triggers our body to produce vitamin D, a nutrient that is a vital player in our overall health. It's not just about strong bones. Vitamin D is also a crucial immune modulator, helping our bodies fight off diseases. So, what happens when we don't get enough of this sun-powered vitamin? Our bodies might struggle more than we think. The higher incidence of certain diseases in regions with less sun exposure could be a testament to this. In an era where we've been conditioned to avoid the sun and lather up with sunblock, it's time to rethink our relationship with our nearest star. The sun, and by extension vitamin D, may be more critical to our health than we've been led to believe. It's time we reconsider our relationship with the sun and vitamin D. Thank you for staying with us throughout this enlightening journey into the vitamin D controversy. We hope this video has shed some light on the matter and made you reconsider your relationship with the sun and vitamin D. If you found this information helpful or interesting, please share this video with your friends and family. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more content like this. So, what's coming next, you ask? Well, we're going to dive deeper into the world of health and wellness. Remember, your health is your wealth. It's time we take charge, question the norms, and find the best path for our health and happiness. Until next time, stay healthy, stay safe, and stay informed. See you in the next video.